Hey people, I am Sandeepa. Welcome back to my channel Concern Earth. In this video, I am going to describe some criteria of selecting a sampling procedure. Okay, so if you have not subscribed my channel yet, please do it and share my videos. Now, come to the video. So, in this context, one must remember that two costs are involved in a sampling analysis. And these are the cost of collecting the data and the cost of an incorrect inference resulting from the data. So the first one is the monetary one and the second is uh, the time and the effort, loss of time and efforts and everything including the money. So the researcher must keep in view the two causes of incorrect inferences that is systematic bias and the sampling error a systemic a systematic bias results from error in the sampling procedure that i have described in the last video and it can be reduced or eliminated by increasing the sample size at best the causes responsible for these errors can be detected and corrected while sampling error are the random variations in the sample estimates around the true population parameters. So first we will describe the uh, reasons of the systematic error or systematic biases. The first point is inappropriate sampling frame. So in the last video we have discru discussed what is source list. And the inappropriate sampling frame is the result of selecting wrong source list. If the sampling frame is inappropriate, that is a biased representation of the universe, it will result in a systematic bias. The second point is defective measuring device. If the measuring device is constantly in error, it will result in systematic bias also. Like in survey work, systematic bias can result if the questionnaire or the interviewer is biased. So it should be prepared very carefully. Similarly, if the physical measuring device is defective, there will be systematic bias in the data collected through such a measuring device. Another point is non-respondents. So suppose you have chosen uh, sample size, you have chosen some uh, size of the sample from the source list and unable to uh, include them or unable to sample all the individuals initially included in the sample. So there may arise a systematic bias too. The reason is that in such a situation, the likelihood of establishing contact or receiving a response from an individual is often correlated with the measure of what is to be estimated. Next point is indeterminacy principle. Now sometimes we find that individuals act differently when they kept uh, when kept under observation than what they do when they kept in non-observed situation. For example, if workers are aware that somebody is observing them in course of a work study on the basis of which the average length of time to complete a task will be determined and accordingly the quota will be set for piece of work, they generally tend to work slowly in comparison in comparison to the speed with which they work if kept unobserved so that so that they may get less uh, work of quota thus indeterminacy principle may also be a cause of systematic bias next point is and the last point here is natural bias in the reporting of data now what is this? 
natural bias of respondents in uh, in their reporting of data is often the cause of a systematic bias in many inquiries there is usually a downward bias in the income data collected by government taxation department whereas we find an upward bias in the income data collected by some social organizations like people in general understate their income if asked about uh, it for tax purpose and on the other hand they overstate the same if asked for uh, social status to increase their affluence generally in psychological surveys people tend to give what they think is correct answer rather than they truly feel so all these points should be checked and considered to reduce the systematic biasness in your study on the other hand sampling errors are random variations sampling errors decreases with the uh, with the increase in the size of sample and it happens to be of a smaller magnitude in case of homogeneous population sampling error can be measured for a given sample design and size the measurement of sampling error is usually called the precision of the sampling plan now if we increase the sample size the precision can be improved but on the other hand increasing the size of the sample has its own limitation that is a large sized sample increases the cost of collecting data and also enhances the systematic bias so the effective way to increase precision is usually to select a better sampling design which has a smaller sampling error for a given sample size at a given cost and in practice people prefer a less precise design because it is easier to adopt it and also because of the fact that systematic bias can be controlled in a better way in such a design so i hope you uh, you have understood the concept or the importance of uh, sample design or the criteria of selecting a sampling procedure thank you so much subscribe my channel and share my videos as much as you can have a good day